This is a book on systems programming. It's part of the computer science series, and it's an older book by Donovan. In this video, I thought we would just take a quick look at this book. It's published by McGraw-Hill. Let's open it up and take a look inside. But before we do, I just want to give it a really strong whiff. Just Ah, smells amazing. It smells like knowledge. Let's check this book out. Really old school systems programming. McGraw-Hill Computer Science Series, Richard Hemming, Bell Telephone Laboratories, Edward A. Feigenbaum, Stanford University. We have some other books here in the computer science series. Systems Programming, John J. Donovan, Project Mac, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that would be MIT. Cool, let's check the copyright on this. I'm sure it's pretty old. Yeah, there it is, 1972 McGraw Hill, printed in the United States of America. Super, super old. To 6.251 teaching assistants. Let's take a look at the contents. So it starts with background, okay? Then machine structure, machine language, and assembly language. And this is something, these are things that you might learn if you got a degree in computer science. Assemblers, macro language, and the macro processor. Loaders. Programming languages, so you have the importance of high-level languages, features of a high-level language, data types and data structures, storage allocation and scope of names. So all kinds of topics. Formal systems and programming languages, an introduction, compilers, and then there's just a lot more operating systems. This, this contains a wealth of information. Let's take a look here at the preface. So preface, scope. In this book, we address ourselves to the full spectrum of systems programming endeavors, including the use and implementation of assemblers, macros, loaders, compilers, and operating systems. We present each of these components in detail, exposing the pertinent design issues. The issues are discussed within the context of modern computer languages and advanced operating systems. It is recognized that in addition to the traditional compiler problem of syntax and semantics, we now have storage allocation and accessing methods to contend with, and that file systems, multiprocessing, and multiprogramming are now commonplace in operating systems. To introduce the more formal aspects of computer science, we have included a presentation of formal systems and their application to programming languages. And the book is written as a text with problems and exercises, with particular emphasis on the problems and examples. We have assumed that the reader has had experience in some high-level language. So you do want to have uh, some experience. And here it talks about the main uses. Uh, it has three major uses as an undergraduate text and a one or two semester course on systems programming. Two, as a book for professionals and three, as a reference for graduate students. So this is this is a book that you can buy and, and again, use it as a reference, keep it in your library. As a collector of you know, math and science books, um, I do have some, some computer science books and this is one of the older ones um, that I have. At MIT, the book is used in the undergraduate course, 6.251, Digital Computer Programming Systems. So that's why, if you go back here to the beginning, it's dedicated to the teaching assistants who are in that course, right? Teaching assistants are basically graduate students usually who do grading or they'll teach like, like help sessions. They call them recitation sessions or tutoring sessions. Um, and they help the instructor, they grade, uh, they, they give quizzes to the class, etc. cetera. Um, it's, it's like a, it's not really a teacher. It's kind of like a sub teacher. It's definitely more fun being an actual teacher, but being a teacher, teaching assistant is also fun. Um, there is a tradition and excitement associated with the course. 
and it is one of the most highly subscribed, I like that they use subscribed, this is pre-YouTube, uh, I mean subscribed is a word, <laughs> elective courses. Having as many as 350 students per semester, that's a lot of students in an elective. I am also told that it is one of the most challenging. At MIT, the course is used to meet all of the above needs. Pretty cool. We have also used the material as a two-semester graduate course. Nice, nice, nice. It's got some acknowledgments. A note to the student. This book does not presuppose extensive knowledge of assembly language, although students with some experience in this language will find the material easier to approach. Chapter 2 contains basic information on assembly language programming. Chapter 6 on high-level languages, PLI in particular. Students may wish to refer to additional sources on assembly language programming and PLI. And then here's some more background, talks about the objectives. And it just gives you like an overview of things, which is kind of cool. Machine structure, input output processor, CPU, printer. So just a, an idea of you know, how, or how things work, which is pretty cool. And I don't know if anyone here watching this video has ever heard of this book. If you have, uh, leave a comment. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a pretty old school popular book. Uh, people have left comments uh, about this book, particular in some of my other uh, computer science videos. I've had people leave comments about this book uh, in the past, uh, and that's why I ended up uh, picking it up uh, because you know people were saying it's uh, you know one of those old school books that has kind of withstood the test of time. Now, I, do, I don't know if this book is still available, so if, if you you know want to learn this stuff, I will leave a link if I can find it. But uh, there's probably more modern books that might be um, more suited for learning and self study. But as a collector. I think it's good to have all books. This book has two major objectives, to teach procedures for the design of software systems and to provide a basis for judgment in the design of software. To facilitate our task, we have taken specific examples from systems programs. We discuss the design and implementation of the major system components. What is systems programming? You may visualize a computer as some sort of beast that obeys all commands. It has been said that computers are basically people made out of metal, or conversely, people are computers made out of flesh and blood. However, once we get close to computers, we see that they are basically machines that follow very specific and primitive instructions. Yeah, yeah very, very specific, and this starts from the beginning. Oh, this is cool. There are over 100,000 computers in use now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if only the authors had the foresight, you know, I'm recording this with a cell phone, which is basically, you know, it has a computer, it has an operating system. Um, so pretty amazing. Machine structure, this is cool. General, general hardware organization of a computer system. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so I'll try to find this book. Uh, if I can find it, I'll leave a link uh, in the description so you can check it out. And yeah. Hey, if you want to learn math, I have courses. Check them out. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. They're actually on the Udemy site, but if you get them, use the links from my website, you'll get a low price, and it helps me. I've got courses on math, uh, al algebra, abstract algebra, advanced calculus, calculus, differential equations, trig, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, kind of an interesting book uh, on systems programming. And if you've heard of it, leave a comment. I'm curious. It's part of the computer science series, really old school stuff. It's kind of a fun book. It's got to give it one more whiff here. Ah, just love these old books. Take care.